28 Chinese military planes flew by Taiwan this past weekend. Should we be afraid? We'll be talking to a war expert in today's show. I'm Natalie Sell. And I'm Andrew Ryan. Let's start with a look at the stories on our radar. A record number of Chinese warplanes crossed into Taiwan's air defense identification zone over the weekend, 13 on Saturday and 15 on Sunday, followed by more smaller incursions this week. An outbreak of COVID-19 centered on a hospital in northern Taiwan appears to have been contained, with a total of 15 people infected. More than 3,000 people linked to the hospital or to infected patients are now in quarantine. Hospitals across northern Taiwan are no longer allowing most visitors as a precaution. Taiwan has re-established contact with one of two domestically built satellites that went silent shortly after SpaceX launched them into orbit earlier in the week. The National Space Organization received a signal from the Flying Squirrel satellite on Wednesday, although the satellite's condition remains unclear. The status of the other satellite, named Yushan, is still unknown. Google just opened its biggest overseas hardware research and development center in Banqiao, New Taipei. The 16-floor center will play a key role in developing the Pixel mobile phone, Google Nest, Chromebook notebooks, and wearable devices, among other important hardware. Researchers at the National Applied Research Laboratories have developed a 3D rendering technique that can save artists months of time. The technique uses what are called point clouds to map out objects, and then uses artificial intelligence to correct errors. This technique is being patented, and the team envisions it facilitating digital animation, architecture, and the restoration of historic buildings. So at the top of the show, we talked about how there are 28 Chinese military planes that flew nearby Taiwan just this past weekend. Do you think we should be afraid? A little bit. I mean, that's a lot of military, you know, incursions right near Taiwan, but we're kind of getting used to it. It's been happening for the past few months. Yeah. My friends and family ask me all the time, like, are you afraid? Are you afraid of the, you know, the hospital cluster infection? Are you afraid of the Chinese military planes? And I always say, of course, because I'm afraid of everything, but I think the authorities have it under control. Well, is China getting ready for real warfare or is it just psychological warfare? I spoke with Kerry Gershanik, a Taiwan fellow at National Zunzi University, the author of Political Warfare, Strategies for Combating China's Plan to Win Without Fighting. I asked him what China was trying to achieve through those warplanes this weekend. The PRC has always tested every new American president. And it was totally expected that uh, right away Xi Jinping would test both the resolve and the skill of the Biden administration. So sending those three large flights of uh, both PLA Air Force and PLA Navy aircraft uh, was designed to see what the response would be mm. from the Biden administration. So the other audience, the second one is you. It's the people of Taiwan. It's the government of Taiwan. The, the purpose of PRC political warfare as it pertains to Taiwan is to demoralize and divide you, to make you quit, to make you just walk like sheep uh, into the, the cold embrace of the Chinese Communist Party and become a province of the People's Republic of China. You are going to be worn down. They want to demoralize you. They want you to think you cannot win. You cannot maintain your sovereignty. You cannot retain your freedom. And they do this in a number of ways, one of which is military intimidation, one of which is those three very large flights that they send uh, uh, for both combat training and, and for psychological warfare purposes against you. The third audience, it's internal. People's Republic of China. It's the mm -hmm. subjects. I won't call them citizens. You're, you're, you're a citizen in your country. I'm a citizen in mine. We're in democracies. The 1.3 billion people in the People's Republic of China, they're subjects, just like under any other monarchy. So the audience is also, for political warfare purposes, internal. It is to not just intimidate you, but it's to help enhance the stature of Xi Jinping to the people of China and to win him uh, continued support by the military, which has been pushing for the invasion of Taiwan. So do you think that we should be afraid though? Because, you know, there's some reports that are saying, is this a rehearsal for war? Forbes magazine has an article that said that. You have to ask yourself, why are they doing that before I can answer your question? Why are they doing that? Because they saw in the last, 
<clears throat> presidential and, and national elections in Taiwan, you aren't going to be like sheep. You're not going to just quit and, and allow the PRC to take over Taiwan. You want to defend your sovereignty, your freedom, uh, the rule of law. And so they, they found that their political warfare, which, in which they've, in, they've invested billions and billions of dollars, massive uh, amount of resources, people, effort, to get you to quit, you didn't. So now it's the military option that they're playing up. Uh, would they do it? Communists are opportunistic. Uh, the Chinese Communist Party is always opportunistic. If the opportunity was there, they very well would do it. But this answers your question. Should you be scared? You should be prudent. And you should begin taking even greater steps than you're taking now. And I applaud the steps that are being taken now by the Tsai administration and the people of Taiwan. But take even greater steps to do two things. One, strengthen yourself internally to fight the political warfare that is being waged against you. It's an existential battle. Understand that. That's how they plan to win, to win without fighting. Go back to the title of my book. They want to win without going to kinetic warfare. It's a struggle for them. It's a massive effort for them, but they want to win without having to send in the shells, send in the missiles, send in the bombers that they were, you know, in the, on the mission last week, anti-submarine aircraft. They want to do it without having to destroy all your technological capacity, all your brain power, the, the, the human capital, as well as the technology on Taiwan. They want you to quit. So strengthen yourself against that attack. Strengthen yourself militarily. Go even further with technology, equipment, realistic combat training, and then developing a civilian capacity to help resist. And make sure Xi Jinping and the Politburo know it's going to be hell to pay. You will not win if you attack Taiwan. You will not successfully invade us. Now, the whole interview is actually fascinating. He had some very interesting things to say, and we'll have the full interview up for you on YouTube and Facebook. And Kerry is also making his book available for free, so we'll have the link in the show notes below. People in Taiwan are worried about China attacking. But here's the thing, those fears may be unfounded, because on January 25th, Chinese leader Xi Jinping said this. The strong should not bully the weak. Decisions should not be made by simply showing off strong muscles or waving a big fist. Xi's remarks came during an online address at a World Economic Forum conference in Davos, Switzerland. Taiwan's representative to the United States, Xiaobi Kim, retweeted the clip of Xi Jinping saying, I will quote him on that. But I think the general reaction to Xi's remarks in Taiwan can be summed up by this picture of a bird with a very dubious expression on its face captioned, What? Well, Taiwan's defense ministry tweeted that on January 24th, 15 Chinese aircraft entered Taiwanese airspace, the highest number this year. You might be thinking, now that happened before Xi Jinping made his remarks. You can let him off the hook, right Leslie? That might be true if it weren't for the fact that the defense ministry also tweeted about an incursion on the 25th and another one on the 26th. In fact, as of January 27th, the defense ministry documented 22 days of incursions in January alone. So China has been flexing its muscles by sending military jets over the Taiwan Strait to bully Taiwan. Kinda contradicts what Xi Jinping said. Harry Bosch asked, Is this real? Seems like a deep fake. I think it says a lot when someone is willing to believe that the video of Xi Jinping was fake rather than a genuine speech. Jessica on Twitter responded with, That's what CCP is. They like to emphasize the virtue they don't have. Ray 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 Taiwan took a more cynical approach saying, I think it was his first attempt at comedy. Now, there are a lot of comments on Twitter calling Xi's statement ironic, but as a reminder to Xi Jinping, Sacha Prem Ganesh said it best, not words, but acts matter. Today's brain game is a game we are calling Who's That Bear? And I'm going to be asking you some questions about the Tourism Bureau's lovable mascot, O-Bear. Now, you guys know oh, who bear. this is, yeah? Yes. There's a bunch of them, right? He's one of them. He's uh, one of them, the yeah. The Formosan Black Bear. <laughs> That's right. And now, Formosan Black Bears, I want to tell you a little bit about them before we start. They are endangered. They're the largest land animal in Taiwan, and they're the only native bear. And in fact, 
Just this past week, we saw them in the news. Park rangers spotted a handful of them in the Jade Mountain Range, including this mama and her babies. And usually they're found farther north in Taiwan. And they've been causing a lot of mischief too, tipping trash cans and damaging living quarters. Now, today I'm going to be asking you some multiple questions about O-Bear. Are you ready? Sure. <laughs> about O-Bear or the, or the Formosan Bear? About O-Bear. Okay, sure. All right. Okay. okay, we're going to try. Let's start off with our first question. Why is he called O-Bear? Why is, is it one, he's always surprised? <laughs> o, is it two, O is Taiwanese for black? Or is it three? O-H stands for outrageous and hairy. I think it's because anytime people see them, they go, oh, a bear. <laughs> I think it's number one. He's always surprised. <laughs> oh, bear? Okay. Well, interestingly enough, it's actually Taiwanese for so black. No. It's for black. Yeah. Okay. That That's makes how sense. good our Taiwanese is. He's, uh, he's a, <laughs> Andrew knows Taiwanese. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I do see one, I do go, oh, a bear. So that, that, was, that was a personal question. It was like, oh. So maybe the more than one is correct. All right. Next question. How tall is O-Bear? Is he very, very <laughs> tall? Is he taller than the average bear? Or is he as tall as seven cups of boba tea? Okay, one, so two, there's three, like... Four, five, six, seven. Taller than the average bear. Okay. <laughs> I, think, I think there was only one, uh, one like objective reference for height in that one. And I have to say that's three, as tall as seven cups of boba tea. Well, Leslie, you are right. <laughs> really? Okay, now, 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 that, now that picture is misleading because the seven cups of boba tea are in the shape of Taipei 101. So is he as tall as Taipei 101? Is that what you're trying to tell me? At the bottom of the screen, it says that uh, he is 180 centimeters in height. He's Which your is, height. I'm 180 He's your centimeters. height. Am I You're not seven cups of boba tea. <laughs> Am I seven <laughs> cups of boba tea tall? Those, those cups of Only boba Only in tea this not. image. Yeah. <laughs> I, I hope that bear, like... So we shouldn't take this too seriously. He, no. That's what you're telling us. I'm telling you, okay. don't take this too seriously. <laughs> Freaking the whole body. He needs to take diabetes seriously is what happens. <laughs> seriously. He also says seven cups of boba are nowhere near enough for me. Yeah, so watch out for you the diabetes watch on there. That's what I'm talking about, man. Type 2 is no joke. All right. Well, let's move on to the next question. Which describes Obear? Which trait? <laughs> he has charming eyes. <laughs> he has an X-shaped belly button. And he has a heart-shaped bottom. I think he has a heart-shaped bottom. <laughs> yeah, he's his, Doesn't I he? saw the I think picture I of the eyes. That. They look a little vacant to me. Just a little bit vacant. <laughs> I'm not sure. I don't remember his egg belly button. I think I remembered for egg That's shape. Too I small. would say three heart-shaped bottom. You both say three. Well, yep. actually, all three of them are correct. Really? Oh, I'm sorry what I said about your eyes, buddy. <laughs> oh, so there's the belly button. Let's start off with charming eyes is number one. He's got an X-shaped belly button, which oh, is wow. attractive, it says. <laughs> 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 he also has... Uh, an eye-catching letter T, representing the Taiwan uh, Tourism Bureau. He oh. has a good-looking <laughs> yet playful X for the belly button. He has an orange cape, which is his favorite color, and the, my favorite one. <laughs> this heart is hilarious. Heart-shaped bottom. It says a heart-shaped bottom, representing my overflowing love for Taiwan. <laughs> I don't get uh, that. <laughs> now that's making me think I need something similar. <laughs> We'll, we'll work on that for you, Leslie. <laughs> <laughs> All right, final question. What's his cousin's name? Is he got it, a cousin? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is it High Bear? Uh -huh. Is it Low Bear? <laughs> or is it No Bear? This is a little tough. I go for High Bear. Hi bear, hi bear. Yeah, I, would, I would say that's a, that's, that's like friendly. hi. You're not like oh, you don't want oh, a low bear. It's like oh, 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 I'm so hi. sad. And then No Bear is just the negative, right? There's No Bear at all. So I would say number one. You guys are right. Yay! We <laughs> this got it is right. O-Bear's cousin, High bear wow, Hi he's bear. in business for all for himself. Oh, look at those. Yeah, she's 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 a busy, busy uh, She's bear. white. Yes. What's going on she's with the got, ear? Like, it looks the like a opposite, crown. opposite um, color scheme. Yeah. I don't know. She's got a lot going on. She's yeah, she's got a lot going fashion on. Fashion bear. The, uh, fashion diva. She's the diva of the uh, <laughs> family, I can tell. So there you have it. That's a look at O-Bear and his cousin, High bear now, of course, because of the pandemic, there haven't been a lot of tourists coming to Taiwan, but don't worry, they're actually sending 35,000 of these O-Bears overseas to share the word about Taiwan. Have a look. The Overseas Community Affairs Council announced on Thursday that it will send 35,000 limited edition care packages to Taiwanese nationals living overseas. The packages are printed with a logo bearing the phrase, Taiwan can help, 
Inside the packages are items made in Taiwan, including Taiwan-shaped handmade soaps and masks featuring the Taiwan Tourism Bureau's mascot, a cartoon Formosan black bear. The council says it helps recipients wear the mask in order to promote Taiwan and hopefully one day allow it to return to the World Health Assembly, the WHO's decision-making body. Meanwhile, the World Taiwanese Chambers of Commerce calls for the WHO not to exclude Taiwan because of political factors. The Chambers of Commerce say that as long as Taiwan remains unable to share its epidemic prevention measures, the WHO will remain incomplete. And finally today, our question of the week. If you had your own mascot, what kind of animal would it be? Leslie. Um, well, I'm not going to be raising an eyebrows, but I said a Formosan ah! black bear. <laughs> Allow me to explain myself because a Formosan black bear, everybody loves the Formosan black bear. There's at least three of them in Taiwan, right? And I thought about like you could do the munch, the munchak, the sika, the pangolin. I thought about clattered leopards. But I was reminded about an experience I had at the Taiwan Zoo where I just locked eyes with this Formosa black bear and I had a moment. And I was just like, yeah, I was probably one of these in my past life because I think he recognized me. Wow. Oh, maybe yeah. it's the V-neck you're wearing. It could it's be. The connection. Yeah. There's could a be. connection, huh? Yeah. Yeah. So there you go. Wonderful. Well, I love to swim, so I would love to have a dolphin oh. to oh. swim with, to ride on, whether in the ocean, in the pool. I think that'd be so cool. Excellent answer. And for me... Uh, I chose capybara. Oh. I don't know if you've seen the videos of these capybaras in Japan swimming in the hot springs with uh, yuzu. The, no. Oh, it's that's pretty cool. Sounds pretty cool. It's like mixing some of my favorite things together. I was this close to choosing capybara. <laughs> I was like this close. If I was just like I would need to go away from the Taiwan angle, and I was watching capybara videos on YouTube also. <laughs> <laughs> right before this, I'm not even kidding. Uh, we could go to the hot springs together. That'd be okay. All right. So thank you so much for joining us for this week's Taiwan Insider. Be sure to connect with us on social media. Yes, leave a comment and uh, like us and subscribe. For Taiwan Insider, I'm Natalie So. I'm Leslie Liao. And I'm Andrew Ryan. See you next week.